So in this video, I'm letting you all in on a really big change I'm making. This is something that I have been considering for quite a while now. And I have been putting it off and putting it off, thinking that with time I would feel differently about it. And I never thought that I would hear myself say these words, but it's time for a change. Psych! You guys, I'm taking out the front passenger seat. I am here at Grove Auto with Ken, and he is going to be helping me. And I'm gonna film the whole thing so that if you do have the tools and can do it yourself, you go right ahead. pre-tensioner for the both are for the airbag so yeah we can just unbolt that yeah, anything yellow or orange you don't ever want to touch Good to but know. this is black so okay. okay yellows for airbags orange is high voltage for hybrids so So in removing the seat, we now have the airbag light on. Uh, so in order to get that off, I am going to disconnect our pressure sensor, passenger computer, and that's it. everything else should be able to say. This is to the seat belt. It doesn't need to see that plugged in. So these three plugs down here, these sensor in this. So we're going to plug that back in and hide it. So the truck will still think there's a seat in there, but not a passenger. So the passenger airbag won't go off, but should there be an accident, the driver's airbag still will uh, inflate, which is what we want. <laughs> yes, perfect. What, what you would want. So this is why you want to get somebody who knows what they're doing when you do something like this. Okay. So we have run into a little bit of a snag here. In this model, there is an airbag in the actual seat. So we have to somehow trick the computer into thinking that there's still an airbag. When you remove an airbag, there's a shorting bar that comes, shorts the wires out so that um, there's no accidental like static electricity that'll discharge that. If I could remove the shorting bar, Measure the resistance of the airbag, I can just take a resistor and plug it in. Then the computer will think that airbag, that seat, is there. But that's dangerous. That's yeah. To remove the shorting bar and then measure the resistance. So I'm gonna try to mimic that airbag to resistor. Let's see if I can find one low enough for what we need. So we think we found it. All right, this is just a test. Mm -hmm. Not wanting to check the exact ohms of the airbag myself. We just Googled it. It said two and a half ohms. So let's see if this turns the light okay. off. Airbag trick work, but apparently it doesn't like not seeing the seatbelt. So we're gonna have to hook the seatbelts back up. Square peg, round hole. Come on, <laughs> there we go. go. So everything needs to be plugged in, people. So I cut the end off the other side. I'm gonna 
solder this in there. Here is your airbag emulator. All right. This is like a cooking This is show. what's left of <laughs> the seat. And that is the necessary part of the seat, apparently. So that your airbags still work. Yeah. Okay, shall we? Let's try right, so this one more time. See if it clear itself. Oh, I gotta do it. Oh, it still came back on. Classification fault. I've never seen that. That was the before. only thing that was left open, so I figure. Right? Gotta be it. All right, everybody, right. everybody in the internet world, <laughs> cross your fingers, please. Well, if the light's off, the airbag system's working. Test pass, boom, everything's good. Yay! I cheated everything. Oh my goodness. Now we just need to put it all back, back together. <laughs> Seats out, lights are out. Yay! Everything's hooked up. Two and a half ohm resistor. Anybody else wants That's to try what this? It took, yeah. Everything else though. There's gotta be a way to figure this out too. But this was <laughs> the easiest solution right now. <laughs> There's always something so satisfying about cleaning things up. Looking much cleaner already. 42 20. And since I saved time, by having that done by somebody who knew what they were doing, I now have the time to work on some other little projects that I had been thinking about besides taking out this front seat, which was a huge deal for me. And actually for the area where the passenger seat is, I was in my mind at first thinking that I would get some plywood and cut it out. I measured everything and was all ready to go to the hardware store. And it occurred to me that taking my own advice in everything else that I have done, I haven't rushed it. And I have sat with it for a while in the space to let it speak to me. And so I'm going to do that. I did end up ordering an area rug because it's about a two by three roughly area. And then I ordered another little storage box that can act for the storage, but also maybe a little seating area. I don't know yet. So in my mind, as I was thinking of doing that space, all these other thoughts came and it seemed overwhelming to me, which when things start to feel overwhelming, I usually take a breath and think what I could do that feels less overwhelming in the moment. So what felt less overwhelming was to do that. Very inexpensive, I don't know, I think $20, $30 or something to have that space be usable in the meantime. I will be out in the Southwest in a few weeks and then I will see how this functions in my space. I love how it opens up the space already and I just want to be in it like this before I do anything permanent. So I will do that and then you will see maybe later on I decide to do something more fancy but in the meantime this is going to be really cool for me and I'll show you why. 
So here is the front seat and I'm gonna go ahead and hop in here. And I used to have to just use this little area to crawl to the back space. But now I can literally put my feet over into this area. Now there's this little space to navigate, even if, we're, if the door were closed here. The front where my passenger seat was over here. and my back space. So it creates a little hallway. Right now I am contemplating not doing much because it almost warrants removing that seat just for the fact that I can swing my legs over and walk around that little hallway now. And I also like that I've had the soft cooler that I have. Maybe I'll get a newer one with a little more structure. I still like the soft cooler because it can squish back further than if I had a hard cooler there. So I am just going to sit with that for a while and mull it over in my brain what I'm gonna do. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing the big changes I've made in my van. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.